Hi everyone, back here for another video. Today it's about the shift screen Forex app. Many people don't like this app because it's not working for them. And I think it's because this app is misunderstood a bit or maybe misunderstood a lot. I must admit the developer can do better in describing how the app works. But I guess it's a marketing strategy to attract users. But I admit it can be quite misleading. However, if users just take time to read the app description and the website manual carefully, you might have the feeling of how it will work. And just to make it clear, I'm not bashing the app as I like how the developer tried to make this work while Apple is not yet giving us this external display functionalities. It's not the perfect app, but no other app provides a better solution and I'm not a developer who can make a better app. So I'm not complaining about it. Too bad there's no trial period offered for this app so people can test it first and not complain after purchasing it. Anyway, I'm here making this video so you can see how Shift Screen Forex works and hopefully it gives more clarity if the description and the guide in their website doesn't answer your questions or your doubts about this app. So let's see how to use the app and I will go into the step-by-step -step process. First, obviously, I need to connect the iPad to the monitor. For me, I use this USB-C to HDMI adapter. I also plug in the charger in this adapter, so, well, it's always charged up because it uses a lot of the iPad's battery when connected to the monitor. When opening Shift Screen for X app, it shows this opening page. What shows here is the message that I can open my first window from the launch pad. And that launch pad is at the bottom right of the iPad. And when I move the mouse on it, it will show the icon on the monitor. If I only have the shift screen app open on the iPad, then I can simply slide the mouse to the bottom right, even without looking at it, and it will pop up the launch pad icon. I click on it and it will direct me to, well, the launch pad. However, if I have another app on split screen, then this may not work because when I move my mouse, it may also reach and go to the side of the other app. So I have to clearly look on the shift screen app to move on the right direction where the launch pad icon is. So speaking of another app, shift screen, is an app, so it cannot open another app. If I try to open another app on the iPad, it will, well, open that app and will replace shift screen that's displayed on the screen. But I can still open another app. How? Well, I can do a split screen and this makes the iPad as a second monitor as what the developer claims in their website and in the app store description. So that's why earlier in the video I said second monitor is technically true because I can use the iPad to display another iPad app, but it has to be on split screen. And another condition is that the other app must be on the right side. Shift screen can work with other iPad apps on split screen as long as it's on the left side. So to recap, I cannot use another app in shift screen because shift screen is an app, but I can use another app with it by using split screen. Oh, one last thing about split screen. I can make shift screen to be in the smallest scale and so the other app is displayed bigger on the iPad screen. Another way I can use the iPad as the second monitor is to use the slide over screen. The slide over screen will work as we see here on the iPad. And I can still use shift screen as you see here on the monitor. This works as long as I have the slide over screen on the right side and preferably on top of another app that is on split screen. This is because if shift screen is in full screen and there's an app on slide over, then I can only work on the area of shift screen not covered by the slide over. As you see here, I cannot click and use the part where the slide over screen is on top of shift screen. Hope that makes sense. Now, moving on on how to use the apps, 
Again, apps here are not the apps downloaded in the iPad. These are the integrated apps in shift screen or opening web apps. Anyway, to open this, I have to go to the launch pad here at the right corner, and then I can choose the quote unquote app I want to open. And pro tip, I use the keyboard shortcut command plus shift plus space bar to open the launch pad. The hotkeys here can be changed in the settings. From the launch pad, at first I thought the colored icons are the available apps that can be used in shift screen. But reminders, calendars, which look like they're colored icons, are not opening when I click on it. So in total, there are 9 integrated apps, or it should be 10 apps that can be used. The 10th is the calculator. I don't use Slack, but just wanted to show that it is opening here, but it shows that the browser is not supported and I cannot find a way to sign in on desktop mode. Unlike Craft, which I have an iPad app for it, and I can still open it in shift screen because it has the desktop web app. So I can open a web browser here in shift screen and enter Craft's URL. After I sign in, it shows that I cannot access it because Craft Web is not available in mobile. So what I do is I click on this gear icon on the URL bar and if I click on request mobile site, it will show the desktop version. <laughs> I don't know why it's not showing request desktop website instead, but hey, I found my workaround. So about the web browser, yes, it is for web browsing, same as in Safari or in Chrome. Well, kind of the same, uh, because when I type something on the URL or the search bar, I cannot use the arrow keys to scroll to the suggestions. Well, but at least clicking on the suggestion works now. It wasn't working well in the previous versions. So from the web browser, I can do the usual web browsing. And I can also try to open other web apps like Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. I tried to open Teams as I thought I can open it via the browser like the other Microsoft web apps, but it doesn't let me sign in. It seems to be stuck in a loop of sign-in request and then eventually it fails. Same happens when I try to open Zoom in the web browser logging into desktop mode. It does not work as you see here. I don't use Google Meet, but I tested it here to show you guys how it works in shift screen. It has the dedicated icon in the launch pad. And when I click on it, I had to do a few tries and had to refresh it so it will open. Once I'm on the home page, it did this weird screen flickering and I don't know why. Anyway, I clicked on start a new meeting and it gave me this error. So I refreshed the screen again and this time it worked. I had to click on allow on this pop-up screen which is to allow it to use the camera and the microphone of the iPad. Now it's working though I tried some options like screen sharing it doesn't work and it gives me this error. Another integrated app in shift screen is Notion. And if I use my own words here, this is like a shortcut to the web app of Notion. It's the same for Google Meets. When I open it in shift screen, the process is exactly the same as logging in and using it from the web browser. So yes, it works, but it is the web app, not the iPad app. The other integrated apps here are Google Docs, PDF viewer, Slack, which I've mentioned already earlier, Linear, well, I don't use it, <laughs> Google Sheets, and the built-in calculator. As I mentioned also earlier, there are other icons here that are not working, and I'm guessing the developer plans to make those available soon, and hopefully all of those will work. 
So other things I can do in shift screen is that I can resize the display of each window in different ways. First, I can adjust the screen size manually by dragging the corners of the window. Dragging the top or the bottom of the window will not work. You always have to do it on the corners. Second way is that I can use keyboard shortcuts. Well, first is command caps lock and number three, that's to put a window on the left side. Command and caps lock and number four is to put a window on the right side. Command and caps lock and number two will put a window in the middle. And lastly, command and caps lock and number one is to make a window in full screen. You can change the hotkeys that you prefer to use from the app settings. The same resizing options with the shortcuts are available in the launchpad. Other options in the launchpad are this. First, I can adjust the screen brightness by dragging this up and down. And this will adjust the brightness of the monitor itself, not the iPad. There is also this option to change to night mode. And I can change the strength level of this night mode from the settings, although I find it really quite yellow. And last option here is how the trackpad or mouse can work, but I have not really used this option much. According to shift screen, when you use shift screen on the iPhone, the iPhone can be used as a trackpad. But again, I have not tried using shift screen on my iPhone and connect the iPhone to the monitor since I don't have an adapter to connect the iPhone to my monitor. <laughs> Last one I would like to mention is about using multiple windows. I can open several tabs in a web browser, and I've described this in my other video, so check it out later if you want. To switch between windows or different web apps, the keyboard shortcut is option plus tab. But again, this can be changed in the settings and you can define whatever hotkeys you want. I keep mine as it is. What is very strange though, is that I cannot keep the last window to stay when I switch to another app. Here's what I mean. I go to Google Sheets and I have the web browser on the other side. Then I open a new window, which is Notion. I put Notion then beside Google Sheet and on top of the web browser. But then when I go back and work on Google Sheets, the Notion disappears and the web browser is back. And I cannot keep Notion and Google Sheets open at the same time because I opened the web browser first. I already sent my feedback to the developer, so hope they will work to change this silly behavior. So yeah, it is for sure not a perfect app, and it's definitely not for everyone. I can use it because I can work using web apps. And is it good even if iPadOS 16 is coming? Well, for now, it has to work for me because I have no choice since my iPad Pro is the second gen and it's not an M1 iPad. I'm not benefiting on the great iPad OS 16 full display on external monitor. So hope this video helps and gave you more idea how shift screen works. And that's it. Thanks for watching.